Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Coffee in the Word. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope and pray that you're all doing well this morning. Mm. Oh, well, first and foremost, I would like to say a happy birthday to my father. Uh, my father in North Carolina is the one who made this mug, so happy birthday, Dad. Be calling you later. And also, this December the 3rd, it is the first Sunday in Advent. And uh, it's, it's always exciting, a new, a new uh, season in the church, on the church calendar. Uh, so Advent uh, takes place uh, so four Sundays before Christmas. So uh, the King is coming. So, all right. Well, this morning we're going to start off in Isaiah. And then we're going to Psalm 80. And then 1 Corinthians and then the Gospel of Mark. So let's get started. Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. And as always, may God bless the reading of his word. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When, did, when you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name, or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. That's good stuff. Let me make sure my mic was still on. All right. Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7, and then 17 through 19. And here we go. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears, and have given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the, the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. Good stuff, good stuff. Let me get a little coffee here. Oh, all right. The epistle lesson this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's good stuff. All right. The Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 13, verses 24 
through 37. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you will know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home, he puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on, wa on the watch. Therefore keep awake, <clears throat> for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at the cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he, when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. And this is the word of the Lord. You know, uh, verse 32 says, But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. So Jesus didn't even know uh, <clears throat> when the end would come. And, uh, you know, you see all these people, uh, YouTube and whatever. There was a gentleman a while back, years ago, who said, you know, the, the the, the rapture is coming. It's, it's going to be here at this specific time. I've looked up the Bible code, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, I had friends at work that were all worried about that. And, and um, you know, it says no one knows, not even the Son, but only the Father. So all these people who say they've got it figured out when the exact end will come, they're telling you they know more than Jesus. Yeah, that's not going to work. So anyway, all right. <laughs> and this is the word of the Lord this morning. So as, as usual, the uh, Revised Common Lectionary has a series of prayers, and I'd like to share those with you this morning. Uh, there's an intercessory prayer, an, uh, a thematic prayer, an intercessory, and then a scripture prayer. So uh, let us pray. God of justice and peace, from the heavens you rain down mercy and kindness, that all on earth may stand in awe and wonder before your marvelous deeds. Raise our heads in expectation that we may yearn for the coming day of the Lord and stand without blame before your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And then, we seek the mighty God in the most unlikely places, as a child in a stable and in an empty tomb. May God hear these prayers, which come from the unlikely corners of our lives. And there are uh, certainly people on my heart and mind and situations that I've uh, you know, been praying for and uh, God knows who they are. So, uh, give us ears to hear, O God, and eyes to watch, that we may know your presence in our midst during this holy season of joy as we anticipate the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. And then, Creator of the world, you are the potter, we are the clay, and you form us in your image. Shape our spirits by Christ's transforming power, that as one people we may live out your compassion and justice, whole and sound in the realm of your peace. Amen. All right. I hope and pray that you all have a fantastic day. Uh, have a good rest of your weekend and uh, all that good stuff. So with that, be safe, be happy, and be blessed. We will see you tomorrow morning on Coffee and the Word. God bless.